everyone for your cheers and also greetings. Um, what did people say that their favourite video game was? Any? Yes, Joseph. Oh, Phoenix Race Ace Attorney. Phoenix Race Ace Attorney. Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. That sounds fun. I used to play a lot of Nancy Drew games on the computer growing up. They were very fun and also cool. Yes, Yoella. Hypermarket. That sounds so fun. Nothing's more fun than the supermarket. Yes, Jackson, right at the back there. Minecraft. Minecraft. Yes, I have heard of this game before. Um, I feel like Minecraft is like older than some. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I have no idea. Um, but I feel like it's very old. I'm personally a big Candy Crush fan, which I know what you're thinking. Rachel, are you my 45-year-old mother? No, I'm not. But I could be if you want me to. Um, and what an excellent transition into. Father's Day. Um, so I thought I should tell you all about my father. Um, I know it's a very fascinating topic for you. Um, but sort of as Sonia said at the beginning, I do want to acknowledge that obviously Father's Day can be really hard for a lot of people. Uh, maybe you don't have a relationship with your dad or it's a bit complicated at the moment. Um, or even maybe he's just stuck out of state with COVID and it's sad seeing everyone else get to celebrate. So we just want to let you know that um, we're thinking of you if that's the case, and if you do want prayer or anything like that, we are more than happy to have a chat and do that as well. But the really cool thing is, as Sonia mentioned as well, um, is that we're really lucky to have a heavenly father who is so much better than the best earthly father. Um, and we're going to unpack a bit more what that means today, um, as I know it's sort of a weird concept sometimes to think about, either because you have like a weird relationship with your dad and you're like, mm, I'm not really sure if I like lumping dad and God in the same area, um, or even just because you're like, mm, big man in the sky, how can he be my father? The science doesn't make sense. Um, but we're going to get to that, so just keep thinking on it. Um, but this is my dad. Uh, some of you may know him um, as he is a teacher, um, and if you've had him as a teacher, I'm sorry, um, because I've heard it's very fascinating to have him. Um, and sometimes growing up, I did wish that he wasn't my father. Um, when he picked me up from parties when I was a kid, he would always like come in and he would like start dancing and stuff, um, which definitely made me want to leave a lot quicker, which I think was his plan, um, but it was very embarrassing. And he was also a PE teacher, obviously the worst kind of teacher, full stop. Um, but then we would also have to go watch like kids play Saturday sports sometimes, which was very boring. Um, sometimes he wasn't as fun as some of my friends' dads who were all like always like joking around and stuff. Um, and to this day, one of the things that people say to me the most is, oh, you're Mark Razi's daughter. Sometimes I didn't even mention who my dad was, and I think they can just tell by my face, which is offensive. Um, <laughs> don't, if I, you think I look like my dad, please don't tell me. I don't think I could handle it. Um, but I do know also that I am very lucky. Um, he's great, and despite all of the fights and disagreements and all of the bad dancing over the years, um, I am very lucky to have a father who loves me a lot. In saying that, though, I will take this time to show you some embarrassing photos of him, just because I can, and I feel like it takes revenge of, like, 23 years of embarrassment. Uh, so this is our dog, Daisy, who is definitely my dad's favourite daughter, um, and they spend all of their time together. I think it sort of detracts from, like, the manly image you might be going for, but Daisy and Dad, BFFs for life. Uh, this next photo is... Those are my glasses. I forgot to bring them to church one week, and he was like, ah, yes, these ones? And I was like, unfortunately, yes. Uh, haven't worn them since, because obviously he's rocking them a lot better than I am. Uh, and final photo. This was my parents' wedding anniversary. They sent us a selfie from dinner. Pretty wholesome. Um, and I can make a very similar face. So if you find me afterwards, I'll try and make it for you. Uh, still not allowed to tell me I look like my dad, though. All right. That's enough of that. Moving on. Um, so yes, if you've been around church for any period of time, you've probably heard of God referred to as God the Father before. Um, and this is biblically based, few, um, because we see God referred to as Father several times throughout the Bible, whether it's through creation, um, how he made the world, birthed all of this wonderfulness. Um, maybe when you're talking about the Trinity of God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you hear him referenced as the Father in there. Um, but we also see Jesus refer to God as his father a lot of the time through the New Testament as well. Um, but beyond those sort of like written out, this God is the father references, uh, we also see him acting fatherly to the people in the Bible and hopefully to yourselves as well. Um, so we're going to have a look at a couple of different ways that God acts as a good father to us. 
um, and some scripture that backs it up. Um, and the thing is that God is so much better than our earthly fathers. And so even when I'm saying some of these things and you're like, I don't really see that in my earthly father, we know that there is a God who is doing all of this for us. So my first way in that God acts as a good father is that God provides for us. Um, and particularly if you've read the Old Testament, um, you see God providing for the Israelites um, and his people time and time and time and time and time again. Um, downstairs and kids, we did like the world's longest series about provision a few weeks ago, just because there's so many examples of God giving his people what they needed, even when they didn't deserve it, or maybe it wasn't what they wanted. Uh, in Philippians 4.19, uh, Paul writes, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And you can see that all there is that all, all our needs are met, even if we don't realize that it's something we need, even when we don't want that thing that he's giving us, all of our needs are met through God's goodness. Um, and that's a promise that he makes us and that we don't need to be anxious about getting what we need because it will be provided to us. Uh, and with that, God also protects now this one I had a bit more trouble connecting to my own father. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty like risk adverse. I don't do anything too dangerous. Don't usually need protecting. Uh, we live in a very safe country. So I was trying to like, work this one out. Wasn't really getting anywhere. Um, but then I read this verse in Matthew 10, 29 to 31. Um, and it says, which are not, no one ever, ever, are not two sparrows sold for a penny. Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. So this verse is cool because it's not talking about going into battle and needing protection or like there's a runaway train and you need protection. It's talking about how although the sparrows might be small, um, maybe they can't really look after themselves, um, but as they go through their daily life, they are looked after by God. And even when we, we're going through our daily life where we might come up against things that could cause us harm, he is there to protect us which sort of allowed me to like think back to my dad and think of when I was learning to drive and he would come over and like grab the wheel because I was almost gonna hit another curb or when we would go to the beach as a kid and he would lift me over the waves because I was small and weak. Um, those were times that I wasn't necessarily like in immediate danger or incredible peril, but he was there to look after me and protect me. And with that, it sort of moves us into point number three of God encourages us. So. In Psalm 10, 17, it says, uh, You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Um, so this is sort of reminding us that regardless of what we're doing or regardless of the circumstances that we're in, if we cry out to God in our trouble, in our sorrow, um, in our fear, that he is there for us and that he has so many better things planned for us. And with that, God comforts us. So... 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. That was poorly read. I'm sorry, it's on the screen. Um, but I like this verse because it talks about going to God and receiving comfort regardless of the circumstance. So regardless of how stupid or silly you feel about whatever's bothering you, God is there to provide comfort no matter what. Um, and I know that's something I sort of find hard to sometimes go to my dad about or my friends about because I'm like, this thing that's annoying me or bothering me or making me upset is so stupid. It's so silly. Like I can see the logic of why I should be able to fix this. Um, and I sort of don't want to tell someone about my feelings in case they're like, that's stupid. Stop that. Um, but the cool thing about God is that he doesn't have that attitude. He wants us to go to him with anything and he can do um, so much to help us with that, even if it feels like it's something that shouldn't be bothering us in the first place. Um, and the last one, and potentially the hardest one I think can be for us to see as a good thing, um, is that God disciplines us. Um, and I know when I was growing up, getting disciplined was not really something I associated with like, ah, yes, my father is very good, you know what I mean? When, like, he would tell me off for doing something, I wasn't going, thank goodness you love me so much that you are telling me that I've done, made a mistake. I'm now going to go to my room and really think about this seriously. 
it was a lot more crying and yelling and slamming the door and screaming, be like, you don't even love me, kind of situations. Um, but knowing, like looking back, I can see that if he hadn't pulled me up on those mistakes or if he hadn't pointed me in the right direction, he actually wouldn't have been loving me at all because I would have conti continued to make mistakes that were bad and dangerous for me. Um, and in Hebrews 12.10, it says they, dis they disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for good in order that we may share in his holiness. And so we see there that although the people around us might make mistakes in disciplining us, I definitely sort of still remember times in my childhood where I think my dad was wrong. I think that the things he was telling me to do might not have been super accurate or maybe that um, I actually did have a better idea of what was good for me. But God doesn't make that mistake. If he's disciplining us, if we're learning a lesson, if we're going through trials, it's for a reason and it's because it's what's best for us. Um, and although that doesn't necessarily make it easier sometimes to accept what we're going through, um, it can help us be more grateful for those lessons we're learning and the experiences we're having. So with that, those are my five points. Pretty easy, pretty simple. God provides for us, God protects, God encourages us, God comforts us, and God disciplines us. Uh, and maybe right now you're thinking like, I'm definitely in like a season of provision. I can see what God's giving me. Or maybe you're like, I guess I'm really being disciplined because there's a lot that I'm sort of working through. Um, but sometimes also you can't see the other things as well. You might feel really, you know, out of sorts, really upset, really uncomfortable. And you're like, God, where is your comfort? Where is that? Um, but the thing that sets God apart from our earthly fathers is that he is always good and he is always providing those things for us. Even if we can't see it, even if we're struggling with it, those things are always good and always coming for us. So with that, let us stand as we pray. And if you would like to hold out your hands and sort of receive the love of God as your father, you're welcome to do that. Um, but the band is going to start slowly coming up. So, no, they're not, they're not coming up. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much um, that you love us um, and that you are a good father to us and that you know um, what is best for us and what we need. Um, and even though we may sometimes feel... Um, let down or failed by the earthly fathers we have, um, you remind us that you uh, love us more than we can ever imagine and that um, who we are is not a reflection of um, our earthly fathers, it is a reflection of you and the love you have for us. Um, and I pray as we head out into this week that we don't forget that um, and that we know that we can come to you, the Father, for comfort, for encouragement, for discipline, for protection and for provision. In your name, amen.